your bits here. Thriving moment. Brought to you by the Sovereign Life. Radio Broadcast Anchor FM. And made also available on six other different platform distributions. Live from North York, Ontario, Canada. I am your hostess, Reverend Maria Arvanatis. today to discuss uh, on this topic called crystals, Reiki, and meditation. Originally from London, England, she immigrated to Canada and now lives in Richmond Hill, Ontario. Reverend Lynn is a certified and registered with the Canadian Reiki Association. Uh, she oversees practice groups of Mikao Usui's <laughs> Master, <laughs> Master, That's good. is it? How do I pronounce that, please? It's Yusui. Yusui, Yusui, <clears throat> Master Level Techniques in Japanese Energy Healing for Alternative Therapy Treatment of Physical, Emotional, and Mental Diseases. Reverend Lynn Offwood is an ordained, licensed spiritual minister with the Canadian International Metaphysical Ministries and has served many couples since 2014 with wedding services, baby naming, passage of life ceremonies, and counseling. Reverend Lynn's passion in life is to assist people on their journey to find peace, love, and joy. She facilitates women's healing circles and meditation and is a very busy woman with many crystals to admire. It brings her great fulfillment to exhibit them in her many workshops. And here with us today, Reverend Lynn Christina Offwood uh, to discuss and expand more on these topics about crystals, Reiki and meditation. <clears throat> Thank you, Maria. It's a pleasure being here. Yes, and I I'd like to know more about this um, Yusu Yusu Master Level Techniques. How, how, how you see? Yeah. Yes. Can you tell me more about that and how you incorporate the crystals into this thing called Reiki? Uh, well, they're two separate things, but you can incorporate them. So Reiki is a form of energy healing. It uh, was originated in Japan with uh, Dr. Mikao Isui, and his techniques are pretty well known throughout the world. And uh, the various levels of Reiki, like Reiki 1, 2, 3, and Masters, uh, people take various levels in order to, um, you know, in order to learn how to do energy healing to help other people. But it's also really indicative of a self-healing process. So the reason they read the levels out is because you're going through your own healing journey at the time. So it is a hands-on, hands-off, non-invasive energy therapy that helps rebalance the body, the body and the mind and the emotion. Um, a lot of it's just, you know, standing uh, in a centered and calm state and really just letting the Reiki energy channel through you to the, uh, to the person that you are working with. So it's not about putting your energy on anybody. It's about being a, an open channel and allow the energy, the universe, or the angels, whatever you believe in, to facilitate the healing of the person that you are working with or even yourself. 
I had no idea. I thought that the crystals were a modality that you used alongside with the to, you know, move around the energy. Uh, let's say, um, you know, for the sacral area, uh, there's a certain stone for that. I forget the name of it now. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, for sure, you can certainly incorporate crystals. It's not part of the, um, well, it is, it's not really part of the classical training. It is in the level three advanced program where you learn about crystals. Uh, you learn how to set a crystal grid and use that for intention setting. Uh, distant, you know, distant healing can be used Reiki and the Reiki symbols, which you can incorporate crystals. So you start to think of them as two separate things that can operate on their own, but you could also incorporate them together. So as far as the comment you just made about the sacral chakra, uh, crystals would be basically you associate the color of the chakra with the color of the crystal. So if it's an orange color, the sacral chakra, which is the confidence um, center, it's the sexual center, it's it's kind of like the center of the soul. The color of that chakra is orange. So you would be an orange crystal there, and then that would be more of a technical approach. But you can also you're an intuitive uh, an energy healer, you may place some other crystal that you're being done to place on that center or any other part of the body come to, to that matter. Okay, so citrine, citrine is one of those crystals that we use for the for the sacral region, is it? Um, no, citrine is typically more in the yellow tone, that's more for solar plexus, which, oh, is, wow. the, the, which is your power center. Okay. Uh, would be things like orange calcite, uh, anything, uh, anything like carnelian, anything. There's not too many orange crystals. Oh, maybe there's a jasper or mukai, maybe orange. Um, but any orange colored crystal would be the one for that particular chakra. And what do you suggest for the muladhara, the root chakra? <laughs> the root chakra? The muladhara, as they call it in the uh, Vedic uh, Indian. Uh, Hindu. Oh, you have to tell me which one is that. I'm sorry, not as familiar with the Vedic. The, the, the Manipuri is the solar plexus, and the Muladhara, okay. Muladhara is the root chakra. Uh, what would you suggest being the crystal lady here? What okay, yeah, well, well, absolutely. So, the, so, so the yellow crystal. So you mentioned the citrine is fine. The other yellow crystal would be yellow calcite or um, yellow jasper. There's not a lot of yellow crystals either. But anyway, that would be yellow. And the root chakra would be red. So you would have mukite, jasper, uh, red jasper, any of those. Because even the root down would be a root and grounding uh, color, which would be red, brown, or black. But the root chakra is red. So if you just look at the chakra chart and look at the colors red, orange, yellow, green, light blue, uh, indigo, purple, and white, you can follow the sequence of the chakra system on the basic seven you know, aspects of that. And you can just a crystal that has the same color and you can work with that. And where does the tiger's eye fall into place in this? Is it the root chakra or is it the solar oh, well, plexus? Yeah, well, actually, it's more, it's more of a sacral chakra crystal. Sacral. Wow. More, more, yeah, the tiger's eye is more sacral chakra. Okay. And now for the root chakra, you're saying red, but where does the ruby fall into semi-precious stone here? Where does that fall into place? Because I was told well, that... Well, ru ruby, ru ruby and garnets and all those, they're all like red, reddish brown kind of crystals. So... And they would all fall in the same zone. So anything from red, brown, um, ruby, garnet, which is for health, uh, smoky quartz, anything going down lower and lower to the ground would be earth, uh, earth star kind of um, crystals. And they're, they're more for grounding and building the foundation. So grounding is really important in any work that you do, because no matter what way we journey or, or how we uh, you know, whether we're elevated through meditation or whatever, a grounding practice is always very good for healing, for managing our own emotion and our own energy. 
Now, isn't that fascinating? Because garnet is the one for Capricorn that represents the earth and what you're saying, the material Maya matrix and the physical world and the root chakra and the ruby which is july which is for my birthday represents of the heart and circulation but it's red so how can that be incorporated whereas the one for leo is more of the green for the heart chakra and that mixes me right up how are we going to well, do well well first of all i don't really follow the commercial um the commercial ch chart for birthstone because somebody made that up and that that and, and fine that's fine everybody can follow them the people are very familiar with that is it not familiar otherwise but if you want to talk from a crystal energy or um how color plays a role in our lives whether it's with crystals or anything about you know what color clothes we wear what color we paint the walls how color affects our mood uh, that's that 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 plays a role. So, for example, you're saying uh, ruby for the heart. Well, the heart is green. Pink. There is a higher heart which is pink, which is like rose quartz, and anything pink. So, ruby could be a dark pink. You know, you know you get into all the details here. And green is for healing and for heart. So, there's two colors for the heart. So that's why green and pink. Wow, thank you for putting that into a better perspective for me. And I would honestly say we, we have to really go with what best feels good for us. Although the opinion of others is what creates uh, the consensus, the facts, and the more we believe in it as a group, a collective, then it becomes more powerful, I agree. But then again, we might not be feeling it. So that's the well, you know, well, I, mean, I mean, color, for example, you know, you know, there's this technical, traditional ways of doing things. So, you know, the chakra system has colors that resonate with that chakra and you know, mm -hmm. whether it's with crystals or even, you know, or, or some other color therapy uh, technique. But at the end of the day, um, you know, if, you, if you're talking about crystals, you know, regardless of the color that you, know, you can work oh this is for headaches or this one's for this this one's for that but at the end of the day the best way is to pick a crystal that you are attracted to and uh and then look up the crystal that you may have selected from your local like, store and then read the message behind the crystal because sometimes people have symptom and they're not really getting to the root cause whereas when you allow your intuition to guide you to a crystal without the, the textbook telling you you know what it does then you be guided to a crystal you may not have been aware of and then when you read about it it says you know i i do this this and this so i can help you with that and then you can pick that crystal because you you should be able to pick a crystal because you can't walk out the store without it wow i mean the crystal actually picks you pick it so you can do this and nothing wrong with doing, opening up a book and saying, you know, this person's for this and so on. But I always guide people to walk around and pick a crystal based on what they're drawn to and then follow their intuition and instinct and then don't doubt. Because sometimes they'll pick up, say, for, I had an example. Somebody in the store picked up a crystal. It was a citrine. And it had, it was, it had, a, little, it had a little crack in it. And then they thought, well, maybe that's not the best crystal. I'm going to try another one. So they went to pick up another one. And the other one was bigger and here, you know, kind of better looking and all that kind of stuff. So she said to me, what should I take? I said to her, well, which one did you pick up first? So it was the one with the crack. So I said, okay. So I said, have you, do you know anything about muscle testing? So she said, no. I said, okay, we'll put one crystal down, hold, hold this new shiny crystal and stand here and hold it in your hand. And I want you to ask the question to the universe, your angels and guides, is this the best crystal for me? And basically, if you ask the question and you are open and receptive, if you fall forward, you're going to be, it's a positive yes. And if your body falls back, it's kind of a no. It's like using a pendulum. So it's an energy, energy test. So this lady, we picked up this crystal uh, the, the shiny one, she fell back. That was a no to that shiny one. And then I said, okay, put that one down, pick up the first one that you selected. And she did. And she um, she fell forward, like tipped forward, which was a yes. 
And at that moment, she had shivers from top to bottom, head to toe, and was totally transformed through this experience of just picking a crystal, but allowing herself to get out of her ego mind and just allow that the, the, the crystal she picked first and she was drawn to was the right crystal for her. It was just one of those moments I kind of never forget. And that's the whole thing about, you know, I like to use crystals to help people learn to trust themselves and trust their intuition. And I use crystals to facilitate that kind of understanding. Wow. And that's my story. You're opening up so many other topics. I'm like, where to begin? You're saying the ego mind here, and I'm thinking resistance, but then you're coming right back around saying, Well, yeah, I mean, you know, actually, I can watch people picking crystals and they're beyond the store. They're trying to read the labels because they, the ego mind steps in and they're saying, like, I got to get the right one. I don't want the right one. I want the right one, right? And then it's like, and I, and I got to get the best one for my money. Oh, it's, wow. it's just, it's, this is so totally not practical. <laughs> so you you know, and you're saying you're getting them to teach them how to trust, to trust in the first, in their intuition. Yeah, so you're helping them. What I, what I really, I think my mission is to help people learn to trust themselves and get the ego mind out of the way and allow the intuition to say, it doesn't matter what that crystal looks like. It wants to work with you because it has a beautiful energy that aligns to your energy right now at this time. And sort of work at the level that you need at this moment. You know, what I really found impressive, when you invited me to your uh, crystal, the crystal lady group, and um, you mentioned here, you had a post here about something to do with amethysts and how they actually, uh, most of them might not be real or something to do with citrine or amethysts. Some of the oh, okay. <laughs> are not real, and it just I and it's never left my mind this question I have to ask you about how do you know what a real citrine is, and how do you know if it's a burnt amethyst? Can you please explain? Yeah, sure. So basically, a real citrine is very rare, and a real citrine will look like a quartz with a lime green a tone in it, like a yellowy green tone. Now, when you see a raw piece of amethyst, uh, I'm going to show you. Oh, but if you have like a raw amethyst, if you have a raw amethyst like this, okay, this is a rough. I'm not sure. Yeah, in case you're videotaping, <laughs> this is a raw amethyst. When you see them like this with their brown, it's what they they heat the amethyst to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and it turns the purple into a brown orange color. So actually, when you see something is sold as citrine like this, it's actually a cooked amethyst. Oh, wow. Yeah, and now when you see a point. And does it change the frequency or the vibration or the energy to that well, of the amethyst? Or no, how does that work? Well, the, well it's not gonna change the mineral content of it. I, mean, I may have slight variations to change the color, right? Oh. Right. Here's a point. Here's a point. Now this is sold as citrine, but actually it's burnt amethyst. Oh my God! I have a few of those hanging from the ceiling. I know. But you know what? But I, but I always thought it was citrine for many years too, until I kind of learned a bit more from the geologists around this. But um, you know, it, and here's the thing. You know, there's a lot of crystals that are not what they are commercially called. Right. So so things like um, selenite, which is a white they use for clearing energy and grids. It looks like a little castle. Uh, I'm going to show you that one here. What is it called? Sorry for those who are just listening to the radio. Uh, this one is selenite. Selenite. Oh, oh that's, that's beautiful. Yeah. So this is selenite. This is a crystal that kind of cleans all other crystals. It's a, a cleanser energy. Now it's called selenite commercially. But what this is is actually gypsum. And the, the type of crystal with the lines in like an opaque is actually satin spa. So it's satin spa gypsum. And this is a crystal you never wash because then you're going to ruin it. But they're sold as selenite. So the real terminology is it's gypsum. It's got a high salt and uh, low, it's, it's got a softness to it. If you leave this in water, you will damage it. Where is that, from Africa? No, this is... Um, it comes from all kinds of very common. 
Oh, not extensive. It's a very good cleanser for your hair. You could use four of these like little chips in a room and grid a room and create a nice balanced energy. Um, so that they, they all have different roles to play. But back to your question of the amethyst, yes. yeah, it's actually cooked amethyst. So that's your answer. <laughs> hey, I wonder if it changes the frequency and it lowers it from, you know, the, the purple being the psychic aspect of it that we use to lower yes. it down to the sacral or whatever you were saying, uh, solar plexus that's new to me now. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. And I don't know. <clears throat> Measured it, but I, I was, you know, with the fact that the colors changed, it could have some uh, indication that there's some difference to it. But, you know, I, I really can't, I'm not, um, I don't really have that answer, but it's a good question. I'll have to go and think about that one. Wow, you know, and uh, I've noticed here on your, on your, uh, the Crystal Lady uh, page here that you have, um, folks, if you want to come in and see and join the group, it's quite fascinating. Um, the Crystal Lady at uh, Revelant. Rev Actually, I have, I have two. I have two Facebook pages. One is about just the Crystal Lady. And I just talk about crystals on that page. Okay, so that I don't have that. So I'm gonna need that thread too, so I can attach it to all the information. Yeah, so you just have to put exactly the three words: the Crystal Lady. Now, there may be a few other crystal ladies, but you just kind of have to find me. <laughs> right, right. In Virginia. And it will say in the sub that it's Rev Lynn. And then I have a, my wedding page, Rev Lynn Offward, and I have my personal page. So I don't have a Reiki page yet. It's quite interesting, but this is all, this is all my new projects for 2022. The crystal lady, um, let me see here what it says. Lynn Christina Offward. Uh, A.K.A. Aka, which is like uh, the soul. <laughs> also, no, also known as. <laughs> yeah, the crystal lady. I, I was wondering because Aka, when you say Aka, you're you're saying the soul. I think it's Egyptian for the soul. Well, well, well it actually means also known as. Oh wow! Yes. Okay, that's what the newer. <laughs> I yeah. Looking. Well, I, you know, I've got a lot of separation of my functions. It's kind of like. Okay, I was, uh, you know, I was doing women's healing circles, I uh, learned Reiki and therapy touch, then I became a minister doing weddings and did a few celebrations of life and graveside services. And then the crystal, I was teaching crystal workshops for pre-COVID for many years. You know, I had like three levels of workshops, I was teaching Reiki, uh, all levels uh, from beginners to master teacher. And of course, COVID's kind of gotten in the way a little bit for all of us to do things on a personal level. Um, but I hope next year that, you know, <laughs> once we get through this next round of Omnicrom that we're dealing with, that we can do that. I haven't really put everything online yet it's because of various other issues that have you know, caused me to delay. But um, so some of it will go online because that's just practical for people. And I hope one day soon that we can get back into a uh, person in person, you know, circles, classes and workshops, because that's where I kind of think I do my best work and um, back into the healing circle, because we're all on our own journey and we all try to find that peace and that uh, calm and get through life's challenges. So that's why it's a journey to joy, love, peace and harmony, because don't we all want that? <laughs> Well, let's go there then. Let's go there um, to women's healing circles and meditation. Uh, can you think, when did you first start this kind of group? And when? Oh, probably, well, actually, probably about 15 years ago. It was a kind of a project I did when I went to Landmark Education. It's more about they teach you how to be unstoppable and then you create something that you're willing to design a minimal plan and get people inspired to do. So I started off. The, the, the circle they were called earth like earth like healing circle i think i wrote, i think i developed it initially about 20 years ago with my sister sitting down in hamanas watching the whales breaching out of the water and we sat there one afternoon having a wine spritzer and uh, we just kind of talked about you know healing circles, light circles all over the world they could have had different topics different things and we were like fantasizing this wonderful light circle uh, activities and though i eventually got to do them about 10 15 years ago i did them for many years 
actually at the Rising Sun then doing them for many years in the classes and workshops every Wednesday. I did it for like three years straight. I uh, did a historical and then a Reiki practice group after. And how much is that? Is that free or how much does that cost for a, a well, at, at the time, I think I was charging $28. I, don't, I mean, it, it's, not like a, it's not like an expensive thing. It's about people coming together. And I would always find that, you know, every Wednesday morning I would sit down in spirit and I was guided by spirit as to what the theme would be for the evening class. And I went in there with, uh, picked a meditation because I do guided meditation. So the guided meditation be on a specific theme for that week. Then I would have a whole bunch of cards in the circle from various, you know, angel decks. Um, people would come in and I would basically uh, put them in a circle of golden light, the whole group. So they were in like this golden bubble. I would take them through a guided meditation, which was the theme for the day. Then afterwards, they would just pick cards and then they would pull a card, which typically had a message for them and or the group entirely, and we were there in the circle. And it always blew my mind, <laughs> almost every week, kind of the messages that came, the healing that we heard, uh, and, and how, the, uh, how the messages, when it wasn't for one person, it was maybe for all. So I just loved doing that. And it was something I was uh, felt drawn to and I was guided to do, and um, I hope to get back to do that. And it may not be called the same thing, but the intent is to work with people. And people will come. I had a lady come from Chicago, landed up in my group here in Richmond Hill, didn't know why she was thinking of her mother on her way over, and um, it ended up being, we did, some, we did some meditation, can't remember, but her message was in the card, um, something to the effect like I am with you or I am here or I know it was something to do with her mother and then everybody <laughs> down crying so it was just so it was so it was so connected and so emotional that I love doing that so it's just about you know the main thing here it's not really um you know telling people what to do for me it's about putting them through an experience that they will find some answers or learn in their own way. Like the crystal example I told you, like in the circle, I just facilitate the experience so they have a, a healing. And that, that's what I do. So I don't like telling people it's this way, it's that way. I don't tell people you should do anything. I, I just find ways to facilitate a learning, a healing experience that they will literally walk away being changed. So they're not really paying for the service. They're just paying for the service. Yeah. You know, it's not even about the money. It's about, it's just kind of stuff. I mean, it's just what I do. Yeah. And of course, COVID's taken me off the circuit a little bit here. Oh, we <laughs> don't talk about it. <laughs> we don't think. You know, I'm going to have to get back on it. <laughs> Oh, we don't we don't want to talk about that too much because you know we're not here to take sides or you know no 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 I'm just saying it's just because we haven't had the in you know contact so so <laughs> you know, that that I, I mean I'm sure we can figure out how to do that or it's going to be online you know that those are options right right and I noticed yeah. here that metaphysical minister. Uh, were you ordained uh, by the Canadian International Metaphysical Ministry? And yes. when was this in 2014? And where were uh, you ordained? Well, I was I was ordained in Richmond Hill under Reverend Diane Pearson. Okay. If I, I started the group with her, I think it was 2014-15, where she first took her directorship with the ministry. So I initially was there. Uh, with her, you know, we were kind of putting things together. I actually helped you. I co-facilitated about a lot of the ordinations myself that she ordained me. And then I helped facilitate ordinations with maybe the first 50 ministers that we did. And then later on, you know, it, that changed. But um, so I'm like, you know, senior minister to her, to the ministry. I've offered guidance to people in, with, with what I know, you know, <laughs> I don't know everything. I know a little bit about weddings, that's it. So I, people need help, I help them. And uh, so, yeah, it's here in Richmond Hill. 
Okay, let's go there. You you are a senior minister over there, and you're still working there with the crystals and everything. Or is it it's still open or? No, well, no, the no, the store still, the the store and the ministry is still open because it's all kind of in the same space. I'm not actually working there. Okay. I do pop in and visit because I'm just working on my own these days. But yeah, I do pop in there and say hello to all my crystal friends. <laughs> okay, so that's still open. Oh, and wow. every time I, yeah, it's still open. It's been there for many years, 23 years. So I do pop in and every time I walk into the store, um, I usually end up helping somebody with a crystal like we've been talking about uh, every time I pop in. So I get called, I guess I get directed to go in. Uh, someone needs help with a crystal. Somebody asks me to help them. Like, oh, here's a crystal lady. Maybe she can help you. And then I end up sorting out that person what they have, what they need. And I go home thinking, oh well, at least I just and this I don't charge for that stuff. I'm just I just show up when I'm needed and uh, do what I do. Okay, so now you touched upon something uh, which you say you officiate weddings, but you're really not. I believe that you are. So let's go there. Uh, What's that? <laughs> you, have you have personal experience. Have you ever been married? Yes. Okay. So then you obviously have firsthand experience on weddings. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not saying I, I mean, I've done, I've done more than weddings personally. Um, it's not that I don't have experience. I have lots of experience on weddings and I kind of know the ins and outs. I just, uh, um, you know, I've not done big venue weddings for a couple of years because of the uh, situation that we're faced with. And actually, I find myself, you know, sort of more back into the healing or energy healing and crystal world. So I'm still doing weddings, but we just have, you know, limited, um, uh, limited uh, uh, access to that right now. Right, and we're not here to make a business out of it either. No, it's not. It's not, and that's it. So it's, it is what it is. People want me to help them get married, then I help them get married. People want me to teach about crystals, I teach about crystals. They want to learn Reiki. So I kind of, you know, I kind of do many things. I'm, I'm not just like this one thing. <laughs> I do many different. Well, there is a difference between a celebrant here, when you say officiating, even celebrants officiate, but a reverend, a good reverend, a good minister, that is not doing it for the business, just marriages, marriages, and, and on the yeah. competitive level, like down to that level. No, yeah, if, you're if, you're, yeah, if you're a metaphysical minister, you, you're working in the, in the area of metaphysics, which is like, for me, that's Reiki, that's the crystals, the meditation. You know, we, we study, you know, the Course of Miracles and all that stuff. So it's basically, that's the energy work and the metaphysical side of what I do. The weddings is just part of the follow, fellowship, fellowship, whatever. I, mean, I people was going to ask you, but you took me right there. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. Yeah, I was going to ask you, uh, what does uh, metaphysical spirituality mean to you? And you already are like so connected to like you're saying, the energy of it all, explain in your words what it means to you. Well, so to me, meta metaphysical, it's it's really the non-physical, it's the unseen energy, right? So if you think about this, we are energy and we are in an energy world. And whether people understand that or not, it's like our, our body, our health, our wellness, uh, operate on many, many levels. There's emo emotional, mental, physical as aspects of this. There's also energy, and, and to me, a uh, big part of this, if you don't learn to manage emotion and learn to manage your reaction to things, uh, energy can get stuck in the system and it can cause illness. So basically illness comes from the outside in. So it's, it's, in your, it's in your auric field, it comes in and it kind of sticks with you depending on the emotion, whether it's grief or sadness or anger, it tends to associate with a certain uh, part of your body and you could you could fall ill or you could not feel well until you've removed that energy block so any, any energy work there's lots of energy uh, modalities you know whether it's feng shui tai chi reiki uh you know there's, there's so many uh, way of uh, acupuncture acupressure uh, you know muscle testing there's so many ways of moving energy but it's really doing the work so for me, it's like, how do you maintain a, a well-balanced system, including working on your emotional state? 
Right, because your emotional, uh, they say, affects your physical, but I think it might be it affects your mental before it affects your physical. Uh, can you? Well, I, I think I think the mental, you know, drives part of it too because you kind of you kind of are you can create what you think. So it's how you manage your mind and your thought because that's what you manifest for yourself. So if you you know if you think of yourself in a certain way, there's usually a command that you think about yourself and that can drive your entire life until you figure out what that command is and what the repeated lessons are, what you're trying to learn and change, uh, then you, you know it takes a while to figure that out. So I think, I think all of them are important. So you have to kind of balance all of them, but the mind is very powerful. And I, I guess you have to work more with positive affirmations, more with even even acknowledging an emotional state. You don't just uh, no. You have to. I'm angry. You've got to go. Well, hey, I'm angry. You know. Oh, I'm sad. And then you can use the called EFT, emotional freedom technique, or tapping, where you can acknowledge this emotion, but yet you can release it to say, even though I feel sad or whatever, I deeply and profoundly love and accept myself. So you can actually work with that mental state and that emotion and help to move it from you know the lesson learned to acceptance and to love and where does the will fall into place where is it actually connecting is it connecting with the consciousness which is spirit or is the will connecting to the ego mind where is the ego the, the will the, the will that force uh, it, I, I think the <laughs> <laughs> having worked with having worked with the body talk practice for the last two years, I believe the will is operating on all levels. I think it's like conscious mind, subconscious mind, uh, past life, DNA imprinting. Is there's wills in there that you don't even know about unless you work with a body talk practitioner who kind of finds it and helps you through it. And I've actually been completely blown away by things that are operating on different things that I'm not aware of. So which is why things like energy healing, tapping and emotional clearing and affirmation work are helping to reprogram the mind, the soul, and the spirit, because then you're still dealing with all your DNA imprint of what's in your what's in your um in your soul, your blueprint or whatever. So I think it's multiple level. I don't think it's just one place. I think it's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah is is free will um has anything to do with your sovereign light being right your free will i think free will is um is your sovereignty is well it? i think i think free will is more what you let me think how do i say this it's like an ego you think you're free but what's freedom <laughs> right right no one no one put you in jail are you free it's really a freedom it's a state of mind right right it is it's a state of being and then our our circumstances is our symptoms that we see that oh we yeah. have no choice but actually we do when we change our state of being right we, we do you know and that's why you know and intention certainly is a big part of this so you know you, you know there's levels that you know and there's levels that you don't know and there's areas that you don't know that you don't know Brilliant intention. Yes, That's yeah, yeah and, so, and so when you start using intention, like you can use a crystal, you can use a crystal and just send intention. So they may say a crystal is for something, but you can have any crystal with an intention and say, please help me with whatever, whatever. Or my intention is to focus on my health. I am healthy, I'm wealthy, you know, I'm happy. All these things because you need to keep reinforcing the will and the intention to the multiple levels of what you are right down to the soul level and, and then really word is sound which is vibration and that's energy it's the i am presence the i am presence is really powerful i am you can say you know nothing if you do nothing else say, hey, i'm wealthy i'm happy you know, i'm this i'm that the other thing it's like you, you're giving this message to yourself and to your soul and to all the energies that are listening to you. 
your subtle body and stepping yeah. into your power and connecting to that will. Yes, directing yeah. it through intention. And absolutely, right. I totally agree to that. Now that you're back talking about crystals again, uh, <laughs> let me ask you, <clears throat> what can you do about the throat chakra? And wh what is it that's kind of, uh, I don't know, it's a nutrition, but it all, always when I get nervous or whatever, my throat, I keep having to clear it, kind of lose my voice there. Can you, do, you, do you have any recommendations or any ideas about how I could be helped by that with crystals? Yeah. Yeah, so basically the throat chakra is a very commonly affected chakra. So for me, I like to use the light blue crystal for throat, not the blue indigo. Light blue, and I love blue lace agate. Now, blue lace agate, if I have one here. One. <laughs> to those listening in now on the radio talk. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I'm showing you. This blue lace agate. Cool. it's so beautiful so calming it's so soft it's just soft so the thing is like it's an obelisk isn't it the problem with the throat is that number one people do not want to speak their truth oh my gosh well <laughs> no that's not them no nothing all society has a certain opinion and you feel that you can't speak your truth because you, you're not speaking your what you what you really feel about something. You always want to be politically and politely correct. So um, so I love blue lace. It's, you would be hard to find a good piece, but you can find a small piece at your, your local crystal store, and it's it's just very calming and very soothing. But that's already been worked with. It. It's an obelisk, is it? Is it the, the shape of it right now? So well, this one happens. I got this in South Africa when I was down there last. And you can probably pretty much find uh, little pieces here. Right. You know, not, it's not common to find big pieces. And you can find small pebbles. But you can, you know, to one of your crystal shops, I'm pretty sure they'll have some. Like Gifts from the Earth is one on Queen Street. Yeah. Yeah, um, <laughs> you know, the one in Richmond Hill has a lot of crystals. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, so without, without promoting it, <laughs> so they have a lot. Of, I know because I worked there with them for many years. That's where I was doing my classes. So I get I get mine from gifts from the earth. I find a lot closer to yeah. the community, too. And yeah, if, you, if you feel you constantly have a problem, you may want to put one of these into a little, a little necklace, like a little pendant, and then you wear it. So you actually could wear the crystal near the location of the area. So you might want to wear a little uh, blue lace agate pendant on your, around your neck. Okay. Well, I yeah. seem to be, I don't know, I, I have this thing that my mother, when she passed away, she was wearing it uh, on her wrist. And I believe it's a jade. And now I have it around my neck, one little piece. It's uh, yeah. Well, well, that's personal. So jade is, uh, jade is a crystal typically from the Asian area and Chinese culture. Good luck. Good luck, goodwill, and prosperity. So it's just a, it's a good luck crystal. But it's, for the, it's a heart chakra crystal. Oh, okay. So whatever it is I'm wearing is all to do with the heart. Absolutely. Yeah, so put that, put that one lower down and they get another one higher up with the... Uh, <laughs> And uh, yeah, so what do you recommend? Uh, I think that we're going into some kind of diet now in the future about e ingesting some of these minerals from like making them into powder, like I'm doing right now with zeolite, uh, but other crystals that we can grind into powder like they do with the Himalayan salt that I noticed mm -hmm. you have a, a salt lamp out there. Uh, I also have like this, uh, the, the one that you were mentioning, the white one, I also have it as a, a light crystal as well, a big one. Um, yeah. But oh, yeah, the sound like, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I know I'm going to have a land salt and things like that. I know you can make mixes with uh, crystals in water, but you have to make sure of the type of crystal you're using. You don't want to be using a crystal that has um, some crystals uh, are not dead but they have a radioactivity to them or they have a metal a metal component so a lot of things like copper um, um gold malachi has a lot of copper in it a lot of metal aspect to it and you don't have anything that could be rusting gold gold is very high very high frequency 
So gold is gold's fine, but I don't think you want to put gold in your elixir. <laughs> Oh, I'm not too sure. Actually, first yeah, and I don't know about grinding crystals. I would be very careful what crystals you would be consuming. I would have to do some research on that. <laughs> yeah, you'd be giving off a gold. Well, because not everything, not everything is good for you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> we won't go there right now, but I, I do on occasion uh, dabble into the monotonic gold and the um <clears throat> what do you call oh, it oh i've heard of that yeah i've heard of that yes uh -huh. it's been a while but i have heard of that yeah and also the silver um i forget now that they Col colloidal use. silver yes and colloidal gold i use as well uh, you know with what's been going on uh, yeah i studied that a while ago i don't i'm not too familiar at this moment to really tell you what they do but they, they're kind of like raising the frequency right in the body when you're ingesting. I think. Yeah, there, there, you can really research that stuff. There's this quite some history behind it. <laughs> oh, it dates back to the <laughs> But you always have to research before you ingest anything. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, when you're paying top dollar. <laughs> yeah, well, you have to know it's what, what it is and it's what's right for you. So, you know. So ingesting minerals isn't really something that you would want to grind up like uh, Himalayan. I so I, I don't I don't particularly do that. I can work with crystals, it doesn't mean I'm gonna end up swallow them. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> but and, you know, I'm not I'm not really in that in that field. I have to look into that, but uh, it's not I don't think we need to do that. But anyway. Oh, not like that. I wasn't like that's kind of comical, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, I've, I've ingested bentonite clay, you know, I've ingested you know, things like that. But uh, again, you know, you still have to know what you're doing. But I know some places that they use it in their water and yeah. they charge up their water before they drink it with certain crystals. Yeah, I teach I teach how to make an Alexa in one of my workshops, but I don't have that in front of me right now, but I just study certain crystals and all the crystals have to be cleaned properly before you use Alexa. So typically it could be rose quartz, it could be a, um, a clear quartz. There's a few crystals that would be fine, but you would want to use some that have high radioactivity or material in them you just have to know the mineral content and what you're putting in there and what do you um what do you think about rubies <clears throat> oh they're nice <laughs> i'm a so rubies probably my birth crystal going back to that uh rubies a rich you know vibrant crystal it's uh i think it's a fire sign it's a leo sign i don't really work too much on the commercial aspects of it but ruby to me would be a root sharper crystal uh, I personally like garnet because garnet is more like a red brown. It's very earthy, and, very, and uh, garnet is really good for overall health. So if some, someone is, needs to be strengthened and improve health, garnet is a great crystal for that. Okay, and with that said, I also want to bring up the fact that you also can it can be found on event event active and uh <clears throat> promoting your weddings and anything from i think 250 to 450 your price range is something like that so. uh, yeah that, that, that's gonna probably change a little bit next year but i was on wedding wire and event texture event tech, event tech tip i haven't really done much in there i mean i have a profile there wedding wire I took down this year because of pain uh, significant premiums um we're not doing the large venue weddings was not really it was it was basically money <laughs> couldn't do any so i took myself off this year because of um it just this ongoing you know situation with covid so um, yeah I, 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 it's out there but i've just i'm just kind of taking a bit of a back seat right now and just uh helping my 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 people, if they want to get married, they want help with that. I help them mostly doing small weddings right now because of the circumstances. Well, I used to be on Wedding Wire, but might I recommend for all that money that you would be paying that you get the quality that you would from Yelp to advertise on there? I know it's significantly like a three, four hundred dollars, but you really don't get charged until you actually get a hooker. Um, yeah, no, well, well yeah, the well, wedding wine, I'm not, not here to talk about it. It is a, it's a premium, right? So, and then, and then, you know, but that, and I, I, I actually knew last year not to re-register um, re 
and I only got two weddings for them the whole year because of COVID. So I, I basically decided this year to trust my instinct and, and not renew that subscription because I'm just not doing that right now. You know, the audience and the public doesn't really understand how much money we go and pay into this competitive field of advertisement so we can get a place so that people can actually see us. And these it's, it's a savage place because these people are like, you know, taking our money and we're not really seeing much of it and they're not really doing the work. We are. And so, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of uh, things like this, but I haven't tried after looking around to see where when Google Googling you, I also found that uh, you're on Wedding Hero. <clears throat> That's something I'd like to try that I haven't yet. Well, well let me talk about that for just a second because um, that company is uh, seems to be promoting people who have not joined them. To, say that, to me, it's a scam. Oh. It's a recent scam I just reported to our ministry, the STEM, STEM because they have me listed there, but I never gave them any consent to put my information up there. They've got a few other people of that ministers there. And they also, they basically copied wedding wire and there's no consent or acknowledgement of those listings. So basically to me, that's a scam or somebody is trying to promote a new business, but taking the information from somewhere else. That's so I'm not, I'm not, so wedding wire and wedding here has come to the top of the list right now. But I can just caution you at this time that I don't know much about them. They have me listed as well as others without my consent. I'm not paying them anything. And oh, uh, to wow. me, it's like they're completely, in, uh, and they're trying to collect people's credit card information. So I would say it's a fraudulent attempt to collect people's information. And having oh. been an ex-director of the fraud department for many, many years, I kind of have a bit of an insight. But it's like, no, that's not something you should look into. I don't believe they are. Um, legitimate. Okay, I was really looking forward to that. So now I'm going to remove it from uh, the information, the description here I have on you for people to reach out to you. Yeah, and it's kind of it's kind of sad because uh, yeah, uh, I, I'm not. I don't know who they are. So there's a lot of money to invest in these in these. Um, you know, I just find them like they're vultures, but then, <clears throat> you know, we take a chance with them to whether we're going to actually get any business out of it or not. And I, I believe the best business is word of mouth. Once you get one family and then you get another, and I think that's the best kind of. Well, you, well, you know, and I, I, I use those, I use Wedding Wire and I use the venture initially. I, I, only did, I only did it for like two years. I did not do it in the beginning. Not in the end. I know. I, I can tell you right now, my business is one hundred percent referral. And you know, when I first started, one hundred percent. I started with uh, Wedding Wire, and they they were giving me a great deal, uh, over a thousand dollars a year. And <laughs> that's a great deal. That and it's a contract, and you you have to pay them. Event active. They want it right up front, <clears throat> like five, six hundred dollars, whether, you know, if you don't want well, it. I never, I never took the referrals because I could never figure out how much they were going to charge me. So, yeah, my profile's there and they'll send you a referral. But I basically ignore them because I don't even know, like, I don't even know. There's nowhere listed what they're going to charge me. But anyway, I'm not really here to talk about these companies and uh, weddings is just something I do. It's not my passion. My passion is crystal and reiki energy working with people because I like to help people shine their light. You know, so weddings is a is a part of the ministry, which is fine. You know, whether I do wedding or celebrations of life or whatever, that's that's something that I get through my referrals. And that's what this radio station is all about: coming together, yeah, for the light. You know, and a lot of things are like that. We work together. We get drawn to people who need us or we need them. And uh, we have something to offer or something to share. And that's really it. You know, this, we could all pay for services, but it's, I'm not really interested in, um, in that side of things. We all do things because we're trying to get things going. But at the end of the day, once you, you have got things going, then people come to you for what you have to offer. 
I realized this, and when I first started, like, I don't have any experience at all, I'll tell you this, I was never married, and I believe that you even have grandchildren now, and... Uh, here are three grand, grand boys, grandsons. <laughs> And they're well, delightful. I love being a grandmother. They're so, they are so cute. Well, how did you manage that? Uh, was it from your marriage and you had how many children? I don't even know anything about that. No, no, no. I, I have two girls and then they're oh, wow. married. So, and then one girl, one of my daughters has one son and who's six. And the other one has a son who's six and one who's three. So and you got, you got married when you came to Canada? Yeah, I got married when I came to Canada. I was 20. Wow, see, this is this is the real thing. If you've never been married and you've never had children, and like my family, it, it was all adopted. I'm, I'm adopted. Okay. And so they never really saw me as that and being a girl. And let me tell you something. They made me feel like I had to be a boy in order to get any kind of respect. And I think, I'm so glad I never fell into this, right? Because now I see it for what it really is. And yeah. there's no way that, okay, they prefer uh, Christian Orthodox, uh, whatever Greek a priest or whatever he is instead of me representing them like my cousin whose daughter just got married and i gave them all the information i did all the work for them and they you know they just ditched me after that and they got the male priest and it's like you know so what so what you know and i was so disappointed at that and i'm thinking well you know my mother and father meant well and you know they they did a lot of good for me but all these other people i don't know them i don't know who they are they're not anything to do with me so this is where it's at right now and the experience i have is basically from okay i'll i'll have to say here uh reverend lynn offwood uh, got me started on marriages she she helped me with the experience that she has to get started it wasn't uh wedding wire it wasn't uh you know yeah i know no, and i'm quite i'm quite happy to sit down with you at another time and help you on the wedding front because i think you have some other experience on a different front so we can certainly take that aside and uh we can talk about that you know and see how i can help with the wedding side of things you've but, been very helpful and you got me started and it wasn't wedding wire or event if all the business I got was from the ministry. It was actually from where I'm licensed, from the civic center. They have a list. Yeah. And they just think, I said, well, where did you get me from? And they say, well, we got the, the list. And that's where they find me. And then yeah, you're, you're, if, you're, if you're a licensed officiant, a registered religious officiant, then you will be on the list that comes under the Services and Jerry Getting Married website. And will be listed as the as as the um, registered religious officiants, which we are in and our ministry religion is metaphysics. And it's so that's free. Cool. And it's free. We don't have to go to all that's the right. So don't worry. Don't worry about that. You just do what you just keep doing what you do, and right? then everything will be fully cool fine. Exactly, exactly. And I'm so honored to have you here today. And in closing, is there any last words that you would like to give to everybody here? Any advice, anything that you might want to share with us? And I'd like to have you on again. <laughs> this is a, I know this is so many topics, we'll have to narrow it down. But I guess I just, I just wish everybody well for the new year ahead and focus on some good intention for 2022. And I think a part of my message really here is that always follow your instincts and follow your heart. And you know, and I, sorry. And I, thank you for and I thank you for having me. <laughs> and you know, I'm going to hold you to that because uh, right now I feel like we might not have any time or room for it. I'd like to have you do us a meditation. That's what I was actually wanting. Uh, yeah, we can actually, we can, we can plan something in the new year for sure. Yes. Okay. Thank you so very much, Reverend Lynn. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me today. And I look forward to the new year and our future uh, time together. There we go. <laughs> <laughs>